What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode two of Off the Bench Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be going over our top 10 wide receivers for the 2023 fantasy season. Uh, Mr. Deemer's going to be starting us off with his number one. Oh, I got the clear cut number one here. Uh, got Mr. Jay Jettas himself, Justin Jefferson. Uh, I feel like ever since he's joined the league, he hasn't slowed down. I mean, unless until he has a down year, I mean, I feel like he's my clear cut number one. I mean, I feel like Kirk Cousins is a very underrated quarterback. He's not the greatest quarterback in the world, but he's very underrated. Uh, but like I said, he puts up big numbers generally every year because of Justin Jefferson. So um, I think, like I said, JJ is basically a lock each week to be a you know top three receiver. So um, you know I would I'd recommend him uh, going after him top easy easy top pick in your fantasy drafts. Um, you know he stays healthy and he'll have, I think he'll have another big year. So. What you got, number one, brother? All right. Um, It's not Justin Jefferson, but I'm going to speak about Justin just a little little bit right here. Last season in the 2022 uh, regular season, I'm going to spit some stats at you guys. He had 128 catches, 1,809 yards, and eight touchdowns. He averaged 14 uh, yards of reception, which is wild. That's that's a large number. He was a wide receiver one overall. He was wide receiver one in points, in receptions, and yards only he was wide receiver eight and touchdowns or he went to the triple crown like cooper cup did the year before and and had i don't know how many ridiculous catches he had oh one handed I mean, double that dude's just freaking one hand i mean freaking stupid i have him actually as my number two he's my number two it's as crazy as that seems i already know who's your number i already, I already know i already know who your number one is so just go ahead and tell everybody oh everyone knows. Know. Go, Every, everyone knows. I mean, we're, we're going everyone with uh knows. <laughs> We're going with Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase to me is the clear cut number one. Oh. Um, even back in the LSU days, you know when when Joe Burrow was throwing to Jamar Chase and good old uh, Justin Jefferson, we all know who the favorite was. We all know who the real deal is, the alpha male in the group is, and that's Jamar Chase. Last season, Jamar Chase had eighty seven receptions, one thousand forty six yards, and nine TDs. He had more TDs than Justin Jefferson. Didn't play as many games, so you know. He could end up taking that number one spot if he, he was healthy all year. He's played two seasons for my Bengals so far. He has 168 catches, 2,501 yards, and 22 touchdowns in two years. He was the offensive rookie of the year, his his uh, rookie season, just like Justin Jefferson was. So, to me, Jamar Chase is going to take that next step up. He was targeted 134 times last year. 134. And that's with him being hurt some games. Like He didn't even play the whole time. Like T. Higgins had to take over – if Jamar Chase is healthy for 17 oh. games. Oh, clear cut number one. What do you think? Yeah, it's over. It, it drives it drives me insane that my top two because I have Chase at two. It drives me freaking insane knowing that I have two LSU players as my top two, and then obviously you have Joe Burrow, one of the I mean, obviously it could be arguably top three, top five quarterback in the league. Yeah. Uh, Those you might think he's the best, but he's also from he's also he's also an LSU. He's also an LSU guy, so yeah. you know it's just crazy to me that you know and Jamar Chase sat out his you know sat out the last year and didn't even play uh, yep. his last year at college and and was still drafted high and was I mean doing what he's doing. I mean, yeah, once I mean JJ will eventually slow down. I mean, I think Jamar Chase is still kind of early. He, I think he's got some a lot more years than JJ does. I think Jamar will end up being the best in the league at some point, if not Absolutely. already. I mean, like your your opinion. So yeah, but, the thing with me about him is. Um, all of you that watch football have seen the Devonte Adams, Aaron Rodgers connection, and how like you knew it was going to him, like you knew it. You saw him line up at yeah, the bottom. Bro, yeah, you saw him line up single covered at the bottom. You knew the ball was going to him, and there's nothing the corner could do about it. And that's the same thing with Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is is way more physical than Justin Jefferson. He might not be as good of a route runner like, like, as an overall actual receiver, but as a football player, mm. Jamar Chase is that guy. Like. What is he? He's six foot yeah, two. And, and Burrow and Burrow and Burrow and Chaser boys. So like he'll have Burrow throwing to him his entire career. So that's just gonna be yeah, I mean, that's just gonna be ridiculous. I mean, yep. the future is I mean, I'd say the future is bright. I mean, hell they've already been the one Super Bowl together. So but would have been two uh, if we had an offense. Sure been... well, it's, it's I said it. I said it. Oh. All right. I'm gonna go ahead uh, and uh, all right, snake. man. Who, who is your who's your number yeah, who's your number three? My number three, I'm sitting with Cooper Cup, and I have some reasons for that. I'm not just saying it to say it. Cooper Cup last year had 75 catches, 812 yards, and six touchdowns, and only played half the season. 
Let me say that again. 75 receptions, 812 yards, and six touchdowns, and played half the season. Like he was hurt and still almost had a thousand yard season. He's played six seasons for the Rams, 500 catches, 6,329 yards, 47 touchdowns for his career so far. Offensive Player of the Year Award, Super Bowl MVP. Uh, and he won the Super Bowl against my Bengals two years ago. Broke my heart, but I mean, he completely destroyed us by himself. He won the game by himself for him. Absolutely. Um, yeah. In fantasy football, here's a stat for you guys that you guys need to realize. And it might not make sense to some, but Cooper Cup over the past two seasons, even with him being hurt, averages over 24 fantasy points a game. And that's four more points than any other player in any position besides quarterback, of course. Skill position player. He averages over four more points than anybody. So that's why, to me, yeah, I don't think he's as as yeah. naturally talented as Jefferson or, or Chase is why I don't have him one or two. But at, Cooper Cup is that man. You, you, could, you could pick him number one overall, and I would not complain. So, Yeah, and he's one of those type of receivers that, I mean, it doesn't matter really who's throwing in the ball. I mean, he's going to get the ball. He's going to – I mean, he's going to do something with it. Uh, I actually had him on my number five, so I had two receivers above him. So – um, but he is one of those interchangeable ones that, I mean, he's just as good as anyone else on the list, to be honest. I mean, mm-hmm. he's, yeah, I mean, the health, the health situation, uh, last year, I guess, hurt him stats wise, but, uh, I, don't know, I think there's a few guys in better situations why he's on five on my list. So gotcha. and that, that's understandable. So who you got, who is your, yeah, uh, and the Rams, yeah, and, yeah. And again, the Rams, the Rams quarterback situation, I'm not high on Stafford anymore because his arms kind of. Yeah, he's dying down. He's kind of getting old. And, I mean, who knows? Stetson Bennett might be the next freaking product. You freaking know. But, he he's the same age uh, as that. That's a joke. <laughs> but, yeah, my three, I'm going to go ahead and go with Mr. Tyreek Hill. Okay. Uh, Four I'm on. The speedster himself. I mean, he's a part of that two-headed monster with Reek and Waddle. I mean, this you just saw the electricity from them two last year. Um, I, I'm not necessarily very high on Tua. I mean, to be fair, you see the Patriots – Jersey right here. I mean, I'm obviously not a big Dolphins guy, but Tyreek Hill is an absolute just matchup nightmare. I mean, he is an at like, I mean, I don't know what his 40 time is, but damn, it's close to four flat if it can be. Uh, Very true. Like said, he's gonna get the ball, and he's already he's and he's already come out saying he's shooting for two grand this year, two yeah. grand yards. So, um, and if Tua stays healthy, and you know. It very well can happen. They can have, I mean, they can have two players. Waddle could also be up there close to two grand, two grand on yards. So, yeah, um, yeah, I got to say, like I said, Reese, my three. Like I said, I just think he's a matchup nightmare, and he's he's gonna have a huge season. So, so speaking on Tyreek, so last season, stat wise, he had 119 receptions on 170 targets. I don't know if 170 that's targets. He, 10, he that's ten targets a game. I mean, he commanded like 30 yeah. or 40 percent of the target share at receiver. So, 119 receptions, 1,710 yards, and seven touchdowns. 1,700 yards, and that's with Tua not not playing for three or four games. You know, when he we have he's going yeah. through that stuff every single week. If if Tua would have played in those four games, three or four games, I promise you he would have got those 2,000 yards. Like that's something I can yeah. look back on. And I mean, can argue all day long about, it, but I I really believe he could have had that 2,000 last year. Yeah, and and two and two has been throwing tanks in training camp, so yeah. I can't imagine. Uh, I mean, hopefully his head's on straight right now, <laughs> but uh, yeah. but like I said, he's been he's been throwing that ball this current training camp, so I think that'll be a pretty big, uh, yep, pretty big year for Mister Reek. He had three hundred and forty-seven uh, PPR fantasy points last year. He was the wide receiver two for points, uh, wide receiver two in receptions, and wide receiver two in yards. The only thing that was holding him back was his receiving touchdowns. But then again, that like like we said, you know, Tua didn't play every game. And uh, Tyreek, for some reason, seemed every single game to catch a 60-yard bomb, it felt like, and get tackled inside the 10. So, like, that's what held him from getting all those touchdowns. If one or two of those long bombs would have went, he would have been the wide receiver one overall points-wise. So, uh, yeah. who do you sit, got sitting at? That's your – what's that's your three, right? That was – yeah, Reek was three. Uh you got a four. four is, you know, you know, I'm really high on this guy. I'm really high on this guy. He's quarterbacks can be questionable this year, but he proved last year that, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter if a potato is throwing to him, he's going to catch the ball. I mean, he is absolutely, he went from, you know, I had a lot of people say that Aaron Rodgers made this guy 
uh, but De- Devontae Adams is the man. And he is arguably – he could be the top receiver in the league, um, pending who's throwing him the ball. I mean, it is going to depend on who's throwing him the ball because obviously I don't think Garoppolo is going to throw for 4,000 yards in a year. So, Something to add to that, what you're about to say. But – Garoppolo failed his physical. That's something that just hit him. He did fail his physical. Yep, he did fail his physical. And who freaking knows who's going to be the quarterback for the Raiders? It could be Trey Lance. It could be just some guy on the street. Hell, it could be Cam Newton. Who the hell fuck? Who knows? So, um, but anyway, Devontae Adams, like I said, he's another one of those matchup nightmare guys. He's the jump ball guy. He'll catch it over you. He'll catch between you. He'll, I mean, you know, he's got speed. He's got hands. I mean, he's a guy that could also hit that close to 2,000 mark on receiving yards if he plays every, every game. So he best he'll get a lot of targets. You know, yeah, best route runner easily. And it wasn't Aaron Rodgers. Trust me. That's, that's obviously been proven because he had Derek Carr at quarterback and did what he did last year. So yes, um, that's what I got it for. I'm not sure who your four is, but who, who you got? Same person. I had Devontae Adams at four. And stat-wise, stat wise, for last season, Devontae Adams came in at exactly 100 catches. 1,516 receiving yards, which is crazy. 14 touchdowns yep. and averaged 15 yards a catch. That was last year. He finished as yeah. the wide receiver three in points, 335 points. That's If you get 335 points out of your receiver, you're in the playoffs. Like You get one person to do that on your team, you're yep, going to. Absolutely. Uh, wide receiver three in yards and wide receiver seven in receptions. So he did it on less receptions than most people, which is absurd. Uh, next for me on my list is C.D. Lamb. Like as much as I hate Ooh. putting a cowboy on my list, I put C.D. Lamb on my list. He is actually my wide receiver six. So we're moving on down a little bit. Like uh, I think we might have got out of line. Oh yeah, you. Fine. But that's okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, my five. Yeah, my five is Cooper Cup. So we've already talked about him. So okay. So my six is C.D. Lamb. Last year, C.D. Lamb had 107 receptions, 1,359 yards, and nine TDs, which is above average, elite level, top 10 for sure. Uh, he's played three set, uh, three seasons for the Cowboys. Each season, he's, he's gotten better. Uh, last season, he finished uh, points-wise as the wide receiver five. He had 107 receptions, which was wide receiver four, and yards was wide receiver six. So he's sitting right there in that elite range of top five, like uh, upside constantly. So to me that with with Dak and the way Dak throws, Dak throws the ball forty times a game. He's got to go to somebody, and the best player on that team to yeah, catch the ball is CeeDee Lamb. Yeah. So to me, CeeDee Lamb is sitting at six for me. Oh. Very easily could be higher depending on situation. Yeah, he's definitely the best wide receiver they have. He was actually my eight on my list, which comes to my six after Cooper Cup, which is AJ Brown. I'm not sure if you had him on your list, but I didn't. AJ Brown is. An absolute just stud of a receiver. And with Jalen Hurts coming off the Super Bowl, uh, you know, appearance, uh, I mean, A.J. Brown is just an absolute, I mean, machine. And opposite of him is Devontae Smith. So, obviously, you know, they have two dominant receivers. Um, yep. Like I said, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, Status-wise, who had more targets uh, than two. But, I mean, A.J. Brown uh, just coming from Tennessee, uh, being the number one guy there to being the number one guy in Philly now to a possible MVP candidate at quarterback, Jalen Hurts. I mean, you target wise, to target wise, Devontae Smith had around 15 more targets for the season than AJ Brown did, but AJ Brown produced, I believe, 100 more yards with what he was given. Yeah. So, to, you know, that, right. that's the only reason I left him off there is because I felt like Devontae Adams is the favorite target. He just didn't get, you know, it, he didn't get it going with him. But, A.J. Brown is a a complete stud. He's a thoroughbred is what I would call A.J. Brown. He's a thoroughbred. He's a monster. Kind of, He reminds you of like a a uh, monster, like a D.K. Metcalf. If D.K. Metcalf was what he was supposed to be, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, no no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you, though. A.J. Brown is a great top 10 pick. Like you can't go wrong with that. Uh, My number seven moving down is Stefan Diggs. I have Stefan Diggs, which is interesting because of the news that broke today about him missing uh, OTAs, mandatory OTAs or or mini camp. He actually, I don't know if you saw, he actually showed up today. He was actually there today. So makes my my heart feel a little better about my list. Uh, I saw that there's internal drama between him and uh, Josh Allen. And Josh Allen said that he was going to try to get him more involved this year. So that's interesting to see. But stat-wise on uh, the year, 
Stefan Diggs is sitting at 100. He had 108 catches, 1,429 yards, and 11 TDs last season. Averaged 13 yards of reception. Uh, he sat at, let's see where he was sitting at, wide receiver four in points, wide receiver three in receptions, wide receiver five in uh, receiving yards. So he's in that top five. Like we said, I have him outside of my top five because of, of the situation I feel like it's going on internally within the, the Bills organization. Easily could be inside the top five, just not for me. What about you? Well, man, you, believe it or not, I did not have uh, Stefan Diggs on my top ten. So I had, uh, in place of him, I hate doing this because I'm not a fan of the Dolphins. I'm not a fan of the Bills either, but obviously for reasons. <laughs> uh, I had Jalen Waddle at seven. And that's just because he's a young upcoming guy, that two-headed monster of Hill and Waddle. I mean, they're going to throw the ball a lot. Um, like I said, both of them could be creeping up on uh, – 2,000 yards a piece next year. Yes. I mean, they're going to get most of, you know, they're going to get most of the targets. Jacecki's not there. He's a Patriot now. I mean, they're, it's, they are the two guys that are going to get the ball the most. So, um, with those two guys, I think, you know, in Waddle, just, he makes plays when he gets the ball. Um, like I said, I think he could, I mean, I don't think he'll hit two grand because I think Reek will, Reek will probably creep up on that. Yeah. I see Waddle finished in like the 14, maybe 14 to 16 range. Um, which would still, yeah. still make him a top receiver. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah, top ten for sure. I have him actually has my number ten. Yeah. He's sitting at ten for me last hey. season. Yeah, I know. Last season, uh, seventy five. Yeah, catches. you had a, you had them you had them both last year. I had both of them on my fantasy team, guys, and it was amazing. You had it, both it, of them last feeling. year. It was a good feeling yeah. going in, knowing you're going to get twenty points from both people. Like you didn't even have to worry. You just said it and yeah. get it. And I actually yep. got him super late in our draft. We have a home league draft that we have we have uh, 14 to 16 people in every single season, and we draft on a board. And you have to come prepared knowing your stuff because if you don't, you're not getting no, like, uh, ADP. It's not showing you. you got to bring your ADP. So I got Jalen Waddle in mm-hmm. the sixth round. Like, it was something crazy. Like, I don't, it, I didn't make any sense. But uh, last yeah. season he had 75 catches, uh, 1,356 yards, and eight touchdowns. Uh, he finished as the wide receiver eight in points. So, I mean, he's just got all the upside in the world. Like like uh, Deemer was saying, easily could finish within with 1,400 to 1,600 yards because easily. of his situation that he's in. And could be even more depending on if Dalvin Cook signs with him because that's going to – like you can't stack the yeah, ball. I, yeah. Dalvin Cook comes. Yeah, I think, I think as, long as, as, long, as long as two is throwing the ball to him, I mean, he'll, I think he'll hit 15 at least. I mean, mm-hmm. um, 15 and double-digit touchdowns. I mean, him and Reek both. I mean – They'll, they'll be hit or miss. One of them's going to – I mean, they're both going to be over 1,500. I just don't – you know, I think Rick will be closer to two and uh, yeah. Watt will be closer to that 1,500 range. So Yeah, absolutely. And you got to think, like we were talking about with Tyreek Hill, I mean, you had about four games last season of Jalen Waddle having a quarterback that was thrown over their head and, and couldn't get the ball to him. And, you know, he still had uh, 1,356. Mm-hmm. So he's at 1,400 with, like, missing four games, basically. So Yeah, this is ridiculous. Who was that for you? That was seven for you? Uh, seven, no, seven, me, and I'll, we can go ahead and skip. It. Yep. Okay. You got seven for me is no, Amon St. Brown. I got Amon Raw St. Brown. That's Sentence. a good one. That's yep. a good one. Yeah. Uh, last season for the Lions, and the Lions are going to be a lot better this season with uh, Jameer Gibbs at running back. Uh, one th- 106 receptions last season, 1,161 yards and six tuds. So, I mean, you're sitting at that elite range, wide receiver seven in points at 267. Uh, wide receiver five in receptions, wide receiver ten in yards. So he's sitting top ten on everything, and he's get he's only been what this is going to be his third year. If you look hey, at it statistically, he's yeah, he's super young. Statistically, what the third season for receivers is when they make the biggest leap, right? Isn't that correct? Like most of the time. So all right, yep. You're looking at yeah, at, and golf and golf showing good signs. So I mean, he is. He you is. know, golf golf is golf had a pretty good year last year. I feel like. He did. So, um, I like. I love Dan. I love Dan Campbell. He has like that hometown like favorite like, dad dude. coach vibes yeah. going. Like he's. I want like, Dan he's a guy. Know. He's a man. <laughs> I mean, dude. The, the, the times I've seen him cry, I just like, dude. I love this man. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he's he's in the win. Like, he wants nothing yeah. more than the win. Uh, who you got sitting at yeah. your number what nine? My nine, uh, yeah, I had C.D. Lamb at eight, so we talked about him. Nine, um, throw somebody else out there, Debo Samuel. Okay, that's he somebody I didn't have. Mr., Mr., Mr. Utility, I would call him. He is just – he will. He can line up at running back. He can line up at receiver. He can run up at slot. X, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, doesn't matter where the hell he's at. 
it's he is an all around just stud. I think, you know, I don't know, Brock Purdy's, you know, his health is still in question. So we don't know who's going to be the quarterback, but they still have Trey Lance there. So, you know, even if Purdy can't go, Lance can. And so I think, you know, I think Lance will be an all right quarterback. So I still think Debo had the production. And I think, especially early on with their, you know, quarterback injuries, I think they're going to really utilize Debo in that offense. Uh, him and McCaffrey both. Yeah. Um, so that's why, and then Debo, he's just, like I said, he's, he's proven on the field. Uh, he's fast. He can catch, he can run, like he run routes. He can do, he can do everything. He, like I said, he can line up running back. He can, whatever, whatever you need to do, he, he can do. I think, you know, he'll have a big fantasy year this year, um, especially when Brock, Brock Purdy comes back and uh, they can utilize him in the offense. Yeah, I agree with you. He wasn't in my top 10 personally, because my last person who I'll talk about in a minute is uh, one of my guys. So I had to put him in there, but uh, like Deemer saying, uh, Debo Samuels has all the touchdown opportunity in the world because he's on an elite offense. He's probably on the top five offense in the league. He is their gadget guy. Like he said, he kind of plays that Taysom Hill role almost where he does a little bit of everything. So you're looking at somebody who yep. could come in line up, goal line, uh, run a sweep, get the touchdown, steal it, vulture it from Christian McCaffrey. He can catch the long ball. He can line up in the slot. Anything that they need, Debo's that guy. So, you know, he yep. could easily finish inside the top ten. He's done it before. I forgot how high he was that one year. I think he was fourth. He finished fourth at receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, for yep. me, my, my number nine and my last one that I'm talking about is T. Higgins. T. Higgins is the wide receiver two for the Bengals, but would be a wide receiver one on – 85% of other teams. He had 74 receptions last season, over 1,000 yards and seven TDs. He, he finished inside the top 20, wide receiver 19 in points, 220 points. But I feel like Joe Burrow is going to ascend to the quarterback gods this season and have an MVP, MVP year. And it's going to be the same thing with how Jalen Waddle is with uh, uh, Tyreek Hill, like uh, a 1A and 1B. That's what Joe Burrow has. Joe Burrow loves uh, T. Higgins, and he's going to give him every single target in the world to keep him and make him sign long-term with the Bengals. So, Senate wide receiver nine for me is Mr. T. Higgins. Bro, oh, you are insane. Oh, my gosh. Okay. All right, dude. All right, I'll, I'll lay one on you. Um, my number 10 is DeAndre Hopkins. He is – doesn't matter where – you know, he's a free agent, so uh, he's he's visiting our boys right here right now. So, uh, there's a good chance – there's a good chance my boy Mac Jones could be throwing to him. So, um, I know not a lot of people are going to think that's a good thing, but it may not. Who knows? But – uh, you can't leave the D hop off your top 10. I mean, that's just, he has just been a dominant, you know, specimen in the league ever since he's been in the league. He had a down year last year, obviously, because he didn't play the entire year, but when he was on the field, he produced. Absolutely. So, I mean, especially somewhere like the Patriots, uh, Titans are an option too, and there may be another at this point. Who knows if he uh, signs a contract when he leaves New England or if he goes, signs in Nashville or where, you know, if he goes to, goes to Baltimore, who knows? I mean, Baltimore, you have Lamar. Or, it could be somewhere else, but it doesn't matter where he goes. He's healthy, and, I mean, he's going to produce. I mean, he's he's creeping up. He's, like, what, 31, 32 now? He's uh, uh, 30 that's going that's on that's 31, that's I believe. 31, yeah. So, I mean, he's still at age. He's still he's still young, prime age. I mean, he's still got a good couple years. So, um, mm -hmm. I would expect him to be – I mean, I think if he plays, he's easily probably – he might be a top five. But, I mean, I'm putting him at 10 just because he – you know, he didn't have a super productive year last year, but yep. I mean, he's, he's just a freak when he's on the field. For those of you who think that uh, DeAndre Hopkins is too old, put into perspective that he is the exact same age as Devonte Adams, like within a month, I believe like their birthday is like within a month. So they're both 30, 31 years old. And Devonte Adams is not slowing down anytime soon. And DeAndre Hopkins is built the exact yeah. same way. He's like wherever he decides to go, he has he has the choice. So he's going to go whatever fits him best to let him showcase himself and get him another contract for another two to three years. I, I figure this is going to be one of those uh, sign sign and prove type contracts where he signs with a team for like eight or nine mil and then tries to sign a two to three year deal to finish out his uh, career somewhere. So if he does sign with the Patriots, Bill Belichick's going to get him the ball. He's going to know what to do with it. So. Or if he signs with Patrick Mahomes, yeah, and how much? I, and yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to be ridiculous. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the Chiefs have enough money for him, but I mean, the only thing, it's, the only thing I've, you know, I've said it ever since he he scheduled a visit. I'm like, well, if he shows up, you have uh, him and Juju. That kind of basically sets up Mac Jones for either a boom or bust year because he could either have a great year and be the quarterback going forward, or 
I mean, this could be Mac Jones last year at quarterback if oh, he if, doesn't produce with. I mean, having someone like D, having someone at D like D Hop at receiver. Yeah, I mean, like that's just, exactly. Like if they get, if they give him yeah. both DeAndre Hopkins and Juju Smith Schuster and he can't do anything with DeAndre Hopkins, there. I mean, he's gonna get y'all are drafting a quarterback. <laughs> y'all are gonna be drafting a quarterback next year. Yeah, that's how it's gonna end up okay. happening. Uh, but uh, just want to let you guys know this is our top ten. Uh, we're going to be trying to bring you guys a video every two days, two to three days. Like I said, um, our goal, I'm going to be busting out in individual videos. Deemer's going to be busting out individual videos. Uh, comment in the comment section what you guys would like to hear from us. We're going to be bringing people on. Uh, we already got people lined up that want to uh, join us in the podcast and discuss some stuff. So we'll be having some special guests soon. Uh, be looking forward to that. Um, we will be letting you guys know on our ch uh, Twitter. Check out our Twitter at Off the um, Wall Podcast. It's going to be the same name as everything else. And Mr. Deemer's running it. It looks great. Go check it out. Same thing with our TikTok. Same name. Link's going to be in the uh, description below. Uh, we will see you guys in two days with a new topic. Peace.